This is your FBI. This is your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. To your FBI, you look for national security, and to the Equitable Society for financial security. These two great institutions are dedicated to the protection of you, your home, and your country. Tonight, the story of a crime against society, extortion. Adolf Hitler was the world's best-known extortionist. His victims were the countries of Europe to whom he said, join the Axis or die. Here in the United States, the merchants of misery who practice extortion do not meet with any more success than Hitler did. And their failure can be attributed in a large measure to the FBI. Extortion used to be a very profitable racket. But the number of cases that crop up each year is diminishing. Every once in a while, though, there comes along a ring of white-collar hoodlums who think they can commit the perfect crime, who think that extortion is the easy way to make a living. Two men and a young girl recently hatched an extortion plot in a small Midwestern city. The plot was formulated. The victim was chosen. All that remained was when and how to strike. Well, Joe, maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe yes, maybe Shut no. Shut up, Anna. Look, you can't keep stalling forever. Either you're going to do it or you're not. Honey, I've been in this game a long time. It isn't as easy as all that. You can't just send them a letter and expect 20 grand to come back by return mail. I think we should ask for more. Carl? Hmm? I got some news for you. This guy isn't the treasurer of the United States. Well, let's get started. So far, we've done nothing but talk. That's right. Why don't we go into action? Because this is the way it's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how our sucker got all his dough, and that's how we're going to take it away from him. Sounds like another stall to me. Now, listen. Tonight, we're going to send him two letters. One to his house and one to his office. Mm-hmm. Also, we're going to call him up. Hey, you want me to write the letters, Joe? Yeah. Here's a copy. Type them out on that plain paper I got in the 5 and 10. And don't handle them. Don't leave any prints on them. It's as good as signing your name. Yeah, okay, okay. And spell everything right. Check it with a dictionary. You want to call him now? What time is it? Uh, quarter past 11. That's no, just about the time he goes to bed. Well, that's interesting. There's a reason. You know, in this business, there's a reason for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look up his number. Okay. Tonight, I want to give him something to think about. He's been sleeping too good lately. I wonder what kind of a guy he is. I don't know. I never met him in my life. I suppose he's like all rich guys. Lancaster 2141. Hmm? The number, Lancaster 2141. Well, don't just stand there. Dial it for me. Okay. Last to get started. Hey, Joe, how do you spell... Look it up. Hey, Joe, take the phone. Okay. Hello? Hello. Is this Mr. Martin? Yes. Mr. Martin... How would you like to donate $20,000 to me? Oh, what? Who is this? Never mind. I said I want twenty grand. Now, just a minute. Listen I... to me. If I don't get $20,000, Mr. Martin, I'm going to have to kill you. When thieves hold up a bank, there is action. Quick, violent action. When the leader of a gang has his rival murdered, there is action. Quick, violent action. In the crime of extortion, there is no action. 
Everything is done quietly. For this is the iron fist in the velvet glove. The first phone call comes late at night to keep the victim awake until the dawn. Everything is done slowly and deliberately. The extortionist works like an ancient torturer. One drop of water at a time falls on the head of the victim. The first drop of water is the midnight phone call. And in this case, as in most cases, it is having the desired effect. Hello. Hello. Answer me. Hello. What is it, dear? That's nothing. Well, it must be something. People just don't call in the middle of the night. But... No, it, it was a wrong number. Now, Paul, you know you can't lie to me. Who was it? A man. Well, well, what did he want? Oh, he... Look, dear, I told you it was the wrong number. Paul. Paul, you're worried about something that man said. What was it? It was just a practical joke. Dear. Well, this is no time of night to be playing practical jokes. Kathy, please, now let's forget the whole thing. Put out the light. Paul. Please, dear, put out the light. What did the man want? You've got to tell me. Well, he... He asked me to donate $20,000 to him. $20,000? Yes, he threatened me. Paul! I'll call the police in the morning. Now. Well, how did he threaten you? What did he say? Forget it for now, dear, please. Paul, I want you to call the police at once. No, wait until morning, But you dear. must realize I'm how... I'm sure it's just some practical joke. Now, go to sleep. Fear is a disease. And like other diseases, it is catching. Mrs. Paul Martin was afraid, deathly afraid. And soon she made her husband afraid. All through the night, the dark, frightening night, Paul Martin kept repeating to himself, Your money or your life. Your money or your life. Your money or your life. A man who works with his hands can sometimes take care of his business on the day after he has lived through such a night. A man who works with his hands, yes, but not a man like Paul Martin. Not a man who sits behind a desk. I sent that letter off to Osborne Electric, Mr. Martin, telling them they forgot to credit us with the 10%. Hmm? Uh, what was that, Miss Gray? That letter to Osborne Electric. I sent it off last night. Oh, that's good. Uh, do you want me to take any more dictation this morning? No, not this morning. Did I receive any more letters? Uh, just the usual mail. If I do receive any, any personal letters, bring them right in. Hmm? Uh, there's a Mr. Simmons waiting to see you. Simmons? I don't, I don't know him. Well, I'll tell him you're busy then. Simmons. Oh, send them right in, right away, yes. Yes, Mr. Martin, right away. You can come in now, Mr. Simmons. Thank you very much. How do you do, sir? Hello, Mr. Martin. That'll be all, Miss Gray. Yes, yes, sir. Sit down, Mr. Simmons. Thank you. Sorry you kept waiting. I didn't know you were here. I just arrived. You uh, are from the... the... Federal Bureau of Investigation, yes. Yes. The local police got in touch with you. Yes. How much did they tell you? Well, I heard about the phone call last night and the letters you received this morning. Well, you know, I thought at first it might have been a practical joke, but these letters do seem to mean business. You received one letter at home and one here at your office? Uh, that's right. Now, what am I supposed to do? Well, first of all, would you mind answering a few questions? Not at all, sir. You know of anyone who has a grudge against you? No, I explored that angle, but I can't think of anyone. Well, how about the people who work for you? No, they've been with me for years. My relationship with all of them has been extremely pleasant. Oh, do you mind letting me see those letters you received? Not at all, sir. Let's see now. Just a minute. Here they are. Thank you. I wish there was some way I could... Comfort my wife. She's worrying herself sick over this. Has anyone handled these letters other than yourself? Uh, no, sir. Good. I'll send them on to Washington to be examined. I see. They'll check them for prints, handwriting, and against anything we have on file. Well, I appreciate that, Mr. Simmons. And I'm grateful for the FBI's interest. Well, the FBI couldn't have been called in on this case unless the criminals had outsmarted themselves. You see, people should be more careful what they send through the United States mail. important mistake, a very fatal mistake every extortionist makes, 
is imagining that he can outthink the Federal Bureau of Investigation. One man, if he is smart, can outthink another man. But no man, no matter how smart, can outthink a battery of laboratories, a building full of files, an agency for law enforcement that has branch offices in every corner of the land, an agency like the FBI that works 24 hours a day. Are there any fingerprints on the Martin letters? Do the letters check with any in the anonymous letter file? Who manufactures the paper that was used? Where is it sold? On what kind of typewriter were the letters written? When the FBI found out the answers to these questions, it went on to others, went on to pursue other clues and to wait for the criminals to make just one mistake. Where's Joe? What do you think? Sleeping again? Uh-huh. What's he running, a shakedown or a marathon? I tried to needle him this morning. He just says we got plenty of time. We'll do plenty of time if he keeps handling it this way. Talking about me, sweetheart? Uh, oh, you're finally up, huh? Mm-hmm. So much talk going on out here, I couldn't sleep. Remind us to talk more often. What are you beefing about? Everything's going all right. Mastermind. No, I just know my business, that's all. I'm glad you think so. Look, I told you before, Martin's got a stew for a while. That's the way I do things. You know, I can't figure whether you want the dough or you just want to torture the guy. I'm not in this for fun, Carl. I'm in it for 20 grand. That's our share. That's right. Don't forget that. Relax, will you? Joe, why don't you tell us what you're doing? You know what I'm doing. It's been three days since my last call. You afraid he's getting lonesome? No. Want me to get the number? No. I thought you were going to call him. On the last call, I told him to look for an ad in the paper. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I don't forget about anything. Stop bragging and let's see some action. <laughs> Honey, I'm afraid you'll never make a good extortionist. Just let me get my hands on that 20 grand. I won't have to be. I want you to go out and make a call for me. To Martin? No. The evening paper. You putting the ad in? Yeah. Saying what? Uh, dear Mr. Martin, meet me at the uh, Washington Hotel tomorrow. Only in town for a few days. Hope you're in good health. Hope you stay that way. <laughs> Give a man enough rope and he'll hang himself is not a saying which was originated by the FBI, but it might well have been, because patience is one of their virtues. And in the Paul Martin case, the FBI was giving the extortionists all the rope they wanted. After the advertisement appeared in the paper, Paul Martin and a special agent went to the Washington Hotel. They checked in and waited, waited for the next move. Cigarette, Mr. Martin? No, no, thanks. I smoke too many now. Why don't you sit down for a while? You think I'll hear from him? Yes, I'm reasonably sure that he'll call. Well, we've been here now for over three hours. Seems like three days. Three years. Well, unfortunately, that's part of the technique. Well, I guess that's true. Please, sit down, Mr. Martin. You've walked about a hundred miles. I'm sorry. I know how you feel. I think I'll call my wife again. Would, would that be all right? Sure, go ahead. She's so upset, you know. Oh, I know. Yes? This is room 1102. Would you please... Uh, just me... a moment. I have a call for you, sir. Oh. Will you take it now? Oh, just a minute. There's a call for me. Take it. Very well. I'll take the call, operator. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Hello? Mr. Martin? Yes? I'm ready to do business. Oh, it's, it's you. Yeah. Get the $20,000 ready. I'll call you at your home and let you know how to pay off. Well, look now, can't you tell me now? I'll tell you when I'm ready, and don't try any tricks. I know them all, and if you cross me, you're going to wind up awful dead. <laughs> momentarily close the Federal Bureau of Investigation file on the extortion ring. We'll return to this case in just a moment. Not long ago, a little church in Brooklyn, New York, was having difficulty making both ends meet. The church building was in urgent need of repairs, but where was the money coming from to do it? 
And then one morning, the phone in the pastor's study rang. A representative of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States was calling to tell a very surprising story. It seems that way back in the 1880s, three members of this parish had joined the Equitable Society. Their object was to create an endowment for their church, so they made it the beneficiary of their equitable policies. Well, many years passed by, the policies became paid up. But meanwhile, the three parishioners moved away. The policies themselves were lost, and the old pastor of the church died without leaving any record of the transaction. Everyone had forgotten about it, except the Equitable Society. You see, when an equitable member who owns a paid-up insurance policy is not heard from for a certain period of time, the society automatically starts to check up. In this case, the result of the investigation was a check for $17,000, which was handed to the present pastor of the Little Brooklyn Church. Well, to him, it was literally money from heaven. Now, don't think that this money was lying idle during the years when the policies were unclaimed. Like all other equitable society dollars, it was constantly at work, invested in farms and homes, in railroads, shipyards, and in scores of other great industries on which our national prosperity depends. For by serving its members, the equitable society serves America. And now back to the file on the extortion ring. After the first phone call, the midnight phone call, the crime of extortion becomes a war of nerves. A war between the criminal and the victim. If they were the only ones concerned, the criminal would have at least a 50% chance of success. But extortion is more than a crime against one man or one family. Extortion is a crime against the people. And the victim has, as his ally, every resource of the FBI. If the criminal wants to fight a war of nerves, the FBI will fight that way. So the FBI waits waits for that mistake every criminal makes. It's your play, Carl. How do you expect me to concentrate on this game? It's your play. Joe, how can you think about cards at a time like this? At a time like what? At a time like this. Let's make a grab for the dough and get it over with. Take it easy, will you, honey? Well, Joe, we don't even know what you're going to do. At least you can tell us that. When the time is right. I thought we were going to grab the dough at the hotel. That place was probably crawling with cops. Maybe it wasn't. Look. I don't know whether you know this or not, but extortion is considered illegal. When are you going to tell us how you're going to get the dough? Maybe now. Well, that's real nice of you. Yeah. Get Martin on the phone. Okay. Tomorrow afternoon, I'm going to have Martin take a train for Cleveland. He's going to stand on the rear platform, and when he gets a signal, he's going to toss us the dough and keep right on going. Oh, so that's the setup, huh? That's the setup. About 18 miles out of town, the train slows down a little. There's a shack there where we can hide. Not bad. It's perfect. Here he is, Joe. Hello? Hello, Mr. Martin. Oh, hello. Tomorrow's the day, Mr. Martin. I see. Well, what can I do? Take the 120 train to Cleveland. Yes? Stand on the rear platform. When you see a white flag being waved, drop the money. Well, now, would you mind repeating that, please? You heard me. Be on that train. I hope you have a pleasant trip. Hello? Hello? He hung up. What did he say? Well, he told me to take a train for Cleveland tomorrow and drop the money off the rear platform. Oh, Paul, this has got to be the end. I know, dear. How much do they think we can take? Well, I'm sure this is the end. But that's what you've been saying for weeks. I think this is it, Mrs. Martin. I hope so. Kathy, why don't you go to bed? Oh, I couldn't sleep, dear. I haven't been able to sleep since that first night. Mrs. Martin, believe me, we're doing everything we can. I know you are, Mr. Simmons. I think this is the break we've been waiting for. Do you, do you have the money I drew out? Yes, we made a list of the serial numbers. I'll have it for you tomorrow. 
Now, don't worry, Mr. Martin. Everything will be all right. All that night, arrangements are being made. Every possible precaution must be taken to see that the criminal, once cornered, does not escape. A special car is attached to the train. Paul Martin and the special agents of the FBI are the only passengers allowed in the car. Arrangements are made with the Army Air Forces. An aeroplane and radio communication with the FBI will follow the train. We'll keep watching for a prearranged signal. The FBI is also stationed in radio cars at strategic points along the highway, waiting for the word. The word to close in. The FBI has built a trap, and now the trap is being loaded with bait. Paul Martin stands on the rear platform of the special car. Simmons is crouched behind a partly open door, both watching, watching for a white flag. Can you see anything yet, Mr. Martin? Nothing yet. Well, keep watching. Yes, sir. Simmons to plane. Right. We'll signal you with a flag as soon as we drop the money. Right. Are you in touch with the police cars? Constantly. They haven't spotted anything either. How soon do you think it'll be before we can expect some action? Can't see. These jobs don't hold too much gas. I know. I'll check back later. Right. See anything yet, Mr. Martin? No. You watch the left side. I'll watch the right. Surely. I hope they use a good size flag. Yes. Mr. Simmons. I see it. Drop the money. Now signal the plane. Right. Simmons to plane. We got your signal. Nothing suspicious yet. Keep a close watch. We can't afford to miss them. There's a car parked off the highway. There's also a police car parked at the crossing just ahead. I'll have the train stopped. You tell the police car to pick me up. Okay. Keep your fingers crossed, Simmons. I think we've got your boys cornered. Pilot to radio car six. Go ahead. About four miles down the highway, there's a car parked off the road. Go ahead. I'm down to about a thousand feet. I can't make anybody out, but if they've picked up the money, that's the only car for miles around. Wait at the crossing. Simmons is having the train stopped. We'll wait for him. Wait a minute. Huh? Don't go out in the road. Why not? We'll wait right here for the car. Well, who's going to see us? We wait here. You figure we'll be entailed? No. I just never take chances. Remember? Hey, where's the package? The money? Yeah. I have it under my coat. Oh, okay. I hope Anna remembers this, but... Look, will you stop worrying just for once? Yeah, okay, okay. Car coming. I hear it. What do we do? We wait. If it's Anna, she'll stop. It's a Chevy. It's our car. Good. Come on. Here we are, honey. Come on, Joe. Stay where you are, both of you. Huh? What is this, Anna? These guys stopped me up the road, got in the car. Who are they? Those special agents of the FBI. Joe. We're here to collect that 20,000, gentlemen, with interest. <laughs> of nerves was over, and it ended the way it had to end, the way it always ends. Extortion is a crime, and crime is an unprofitable business. Someday, some far away day in the future, even those among us with criminal tendencies will realize that crime does not pay. When that day comes, there will be no further need for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. But until that day, 
The men of the FBI stand between you and crime. They stand as an unbreakable wall. the disposition of this case in just a moment. Tonight, will you join the Equitable Society in a salute to a very humble and thoroughly familiar object, a salute to a lump of coal? Without old King Coal as our ally, it would be impossible to fight this war. Coal runs our railroads. Coal provides 62% of our electric power. Coal is a necessity in the manufacture of steel for ships and tanks. And from coal... More than 200,000 products are derived, ranging from high explosives to the sulfur drugs that have saved the lives of countless American fighting men. So let us salute the coal industry for supplying us in 1944 with 700 million tons, an all-time record of this indispensable weapon of war. A salute also to the hard-working coal miners and dealers who, despite innumerable difficulties, have kept our homes and fuel through four wartime winters. As an investor in the coal industry, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States takes special pride in the fine war record of this industry. In scores of other basic American industries now concentrating on war production, this society's life insurance dollars are helping to ensure the speedy success of our armed forces. Yes, an investment in life insurance is an investment in victory. For in wartime, equitable society dollars are fighting dollars. And at all times, they are security dollars for you, your home, and your country. The two extortionists and their female accomplice were sentenced to serve 12 years in a federal penitentiary. The incidents used in tonight's broadcast are taken from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious... And any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Programs in this series of particular interest to servicemen and women are broadcast overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Tonight, the music was under the direction of Van Cleave. Your narrator was Frank Lovejoy. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. Now, this is Carl Frank, speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time for This is Your FBI. And now the Equitable Society brings you a message from the Office of War Information. In a recent message to Congress, President Truman said, and I quote, We have no desire or intention to destroy or enslave the Japanese people. But there can be no peace in the world until the military power of Japan is destroyed with the same completeness as was the power of the European dictators. Back up, our president. Stay on your war job till the job is done. Play fair by observing rationing and other wartime regulations. And keep on buying war bonds to the limit of your ability. This is the American Broadcasting Company.